I love the arts may like, and you join me in the gallery of my fine Edwardian imaginary mansion house. <laughs> what a collection. What art. And at the heart of it all, my prized possession. My Paul McCartney. Oh, look at it. I'm not sure with which one of them it's meant to be, but whoever it is, they're riding down Penny Lane on an egg. Uh, oh, it's class-like. Look at the drawing on that. Of course, I get to look out upon the fine view of my imaginary grounds. For me, uh, it's beautiful. There's a tall folly in the gardens, a statue of myself in battle. And beyond, hang on, what? Oh, look! It's somebody in the bloody grounds. So that isn't one of my imaginary gardeners. It's a bloody poacher! I'm going to go out there and give them a piece of my mind. Yes, I'll give them a piece of my mind. They come up from the village, you know. Yes, they ask for things. Oi! Oi! Get off my imaginary land. Don't shoot, don't shoot. Hang on. It's not, it's not a poacher at all. It's Kath Tyler. Oh, hi. Uh, and we're not, hi. in fact, in my imaginary Edwardian grounds anymore. No. We're, in fact, in Gosforth Park having coffee. Are you okay? I'm all right now, thank God. <laughs> How are you doing? Cheers. Cheers. Tink. This cardboard doesn't tink mm. very well. I totally need coffee, like. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, coffee cart. Yeah. Okie dokie, brilliant. Uh, how are you getting on since... Uh, do you want to take that? I will. Uh, so, yeah, that's the <laughs> thing. There. So, how are you getting on since Tusk? Because I thought you seemed to is be Is it over? It every, feels like Tusk is forever. Yeah, Tusk. yeah. <laughs> Which ones you were in? St. James Infirmary, right. Kath and Phil. Kath and Phil. I did Mariam and Kath Tyler. Oh, I didn't see that one. Mariam Razai. Ah, right, okay. Um, I've never actually said her last name. I hope that I did that okay. I think it is Razai, isn't it? Okay. Um, we we did a an improv set for, well, for Tusk, and it got recorded for the BBC Radio 3. Ooh. Uh, for the... The Freeness, no, for the, yeah, for the Freeness and Late Junction collaboration. Oh, right. Which is called, for, which is called Lateness. Ah, right, okay. Is that so, the thing she did, a, another thing with Bish? With Bish, with yeah, Stephen yeah. Bishop? Yeah, with Stephen Bishop of Opal Tapes, etc. And all sorts of goodness. Yeah, um, it was excellent. But yeah, so they, they did a collaboration and then she and I did a collaboration as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I hope we do a lot more because that was... Uh, very fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to swear. Ah, good. Dang, dang fun. <clears throat> she, uh, Mariam's going to be on this podcast. Hello. Podcast. Hello uh, to the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see, we did that. So that was like on the radio a bajillion times, apparently. Um, what else? Kath and Phil. There was more. Oh, and I tried with Byron, we tried to kind of hop on the... Um, the <laughs> the improv relay on Sunday morning, right. but I um uh, on the first was it the first Sunday morning? But I, I think we had some tech trouble. Oh. Uh, but that was fun anyway. Oh, that okay. was good fun. I saw you um, set with Phil. Was that in Blank Studio? That was in Blank Studio that as well. That was absolutely superb. Uh, like oh, I loved that. That was one of my Tusk highlights. That and Gutter Snipe <laughs> were my two favourite saw, Tusky things. I saw Gutter Snipe. That That's was good, doesn't it? Powerful. So what what's your what was your like favourite bit of Tusk? Do you think just in in general overall? That's I was very angry through a lot of it. Angry. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I didn't realise quite how angry I was. Uh. That's probably not what. I meant to say, but I am remembering being very angry. The songs that we picked for the Kath and Phil set mm -hmm. were a lot more angry than some of our sets were. 
There's songs about missing friends who are dead and not there and not being able to mourn and grieve together. Mm -hmm. And there's songs about people being really cruel. <clears throat> that Digger song is mm. just about people being real crappy to each other mm -hmm. uh, and people in power being, yeah, people being really crappy while in power. Uh, Sadly pertinent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the, 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 just a lot more angry, and I remember being angry in the studio. Oh, right. Because um, it doesn't come across like that. No, well, I don't, I don't usually sing. I don't usually sing how I'm feeling. I sing what this song is, because I'm, I'm telling the story mm -hmm. there, and whatever I am goes into it. But it's, it's complicated, because there's the story of the song and there's the story of how the song got to that point in time where I'm about to sing it and there's the story of how I got to that point in time where I'm about to sing it and it all conjoins right at that moment and then you do it and there's that moment when you're actually doing it. It just all happens and then you sing it. songs that were mostly from the collection of Anne and Frank Warner. 
Anne and Frank Warner were a married couple that um, field recorded, went out to places like a lot in North Carolina, uh, Tennessee, and uh, they met some people. It turns out those people sing, sang some songs that Anne and Frank Warner quite liked. Uh, they had two sons. One is called Jeff, one mm -hmm. is named Garrett. Um, and I'm friends with both. Oh, okay. um, and Jeff, Jeff was around where I was living and was uh, working with a lot of the bandmates that I had at the time because I was in a band that was working with a lot of the field recordings, working from, and we visited some of the people that they visited oh, and yeah. some of the descendants because some of the people they field recorded weren't alive anymore. Um, and with Jeff we met in, in New England, which is where I was living. We met a granddaughter of one of my favorite singers from New Hampshire at a festival and we got to sing one of her grandmother's songs. Which singer was that? That's that's Granny Fish. That's um, Lena Bourne Fish from East Jaffe, New Hampshire. All right. Who uh, <laughs> I try and call her up <laughs> every every chance I get. She looked like a little the photographs when she stood for photographs. She kind of stood like um, <laughs> like she was just I am here and I am doing my thing and one of the photographs has her head kind of stuck in one of those half circles over a door uh -huh. and she doesn't look like an angel she looks like Napoleon <laughs> kind of with one of those That's hats right. like the the oh, yeah. um, I don't know what they're called not quite a tricorn hat but she looks uh -huh. like she's ready for battle yeah pretty much um, it's just great and she's kind of holding her hands supporting her upper half and she's ready to do something, really. <laughs> what I wanted to ask about, when, when you are performing, to what extent, uh, like me and Sean were talking about Voices of the Past being recordings, old recordings. Me and Nev Clare were talking about some old graffiti that we saw and that was an echo of the past. Mm -hmm. uh, to what extent, when you're performing these, like, these really old songs, uh, do you feel like you're reaching back into the past to them but do you ever feel like they're somehow reaching forwards towards you or that they somehow stand mm. in the same place as you when you're performing the songs or to, what's your experience of, of that that side of it the only view I have of their perspective is from where I am. Mm -hmm. So I don't know... I don't know that I can actually... tell where they are. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know... Mm -hmm. um, I hope they get to see what's going on you know like the, the woman who was at the folk festival mm -hmm. who saw her heard experienced her grandmother's song from on stage by the son of the person who recorded the song from her grandma mm -hmm. um, she was really psyched, and she believed that her grandma was looking down, like there, and saw it. Oh, right. Because okay. of her kind of belief system of how things work, uh -huh. kind of... So she felt the grandmother was actually there as part of the performance. Well, kind of. also, oh, right. one, of the, one of the reasons I started talking about Jeff in the first place is Jeff and Garrett, when they do performances, they actually bring pictures. Like, uh, photographs enlarged on 
cards and put them on stage because the songs are good and the songs are important, but it, they also quite keenly believe that it's the people, it's the singers, uh -huh. that they're also sharing. It's the knowledge of the people. Mm -hmm. and, and I, it's the people that are important to me, the stories I'm sharing. So, Kath, one of the things. Uh, <laughs> so, Kath, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is what are your own experiences of? Uh, have you experienced something strange or otherworldly? You've talked about uh, the past echoing through old songs, but uh, what about things stranger and more uncanny? <laughs> Um, but there's there are things that end up being kind of coincidental, like like the descendants of Grammy Fish being at the festival. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this or <laughs> boiling my p <laughs> or or vehicles. Mm. And they knew for well we were I'm trying to record as well because I keep looking over at his recording going, oh, we're stopping on recording. Thank you. Take eight. I'm doing a podcast, here I am. Waiting for the truck to shut its cam. <laughs> Driving out the park, it's almost gone. Soon we will be able to resume recording. Okay. Oh. oh. Bye, guys. There he goes. Okay. So, Kath, now the van's gone. One of the things I wanted to ask you look, he's still doing the noise. He's doing the. the <laughs> look, he's coming back. Is he backing up into the park? Oh. Honest to God. Your eyes twitching. Yeah, it's with anger. <laughs> it's rage. It's podcast, it's pod rage. I just made that it's up. It's all rage. I don't, ah, he's gone. So, Kath, now the <laughs> man in the van's gone. Uh, what I wanted to ask you about was have what you. What did you want to ask me? <laughs> I don't know. To, ask me. To take 19. Uh, have you ever experienced anything strange yourself? Not just echoes from the past three songs and those emotional kind of echoes, but what other experiences might you've had of a uncanny nature? Actually, the, the not scary, but kind of not creepy, wondrous, awful in the A-W-E-F-U-L way. Mm -hmm. It actually has to do with Sacred Harp singing, which I haven't oh, mentioned at all. Do you, no, do you know no, about yeah, 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 that's, yeah. So that's the community-based harmony singing where you go and it doesn't, again, doesn't matter what your voice sounds like. And it's a book as well 
full of about 500 some odd songs. Um, first printed in 1844, I'm going academic to try and clarify my brain. Uh, first printed in 1844, The Sacred Harp. But um, I, I love it, and the first time, that's how I found my voice. Well, no, that's how I keep finding my voice through lots of stuff. But I learned how to sing from friends. No, I first sang with friends and they helped me just be able to sing uh, and taught me how to read the music, which I didn't really know. And it's, it's a learning system as well as a, a collection of music and a style of community singing. Oh, so it's a total way into the whole uh, Yeah, like the whole thing. I, I wouldn't have done any public music without having done this first. Oh, right. I was I was told not to. I was told I was too loud, too tall, uh, and like in school, I got told I was too loud, too tall. Can I sit down in the back and just mouth it? All right. And I did for ages until the friends that I met, and then I did this stuff, and then they said, "Can you help us teach other people how to do it?" I went, "Yeah, uh, sh uh, what? Sure, yes." And that was like my first foray into saying yes to things that I didn't think mm -hmm. I should be saying yes to. And then they said, can you join our band? Can you learn how to play the bass in three months? Yes. Can you join our band? Yes. Can you go to Austria for your second show? Yes. Can you, like, it's a whole bunch of, uh -huh. sure, I'll give it a go. Uh -huh. it's, no, there's something powerful about saying yes to things. Oh, my, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> That's why I asked you. <laughs> um, yeah, so lots of yeses. The the thing though that happens is you go to a sing and you if you close your eyes. This is connections to singers. You you know who's there, right? You've looked around the room already. Mm -hmm. But when you close your eyes, you can hear. It's more than just hearing. It's... Okay, so this is the general thing. You can hear who people have sung with. Because you learn little bits from everybody. But sometimes... There's a, there's a woman who passed away a year ago. Just. a couple of days ago, <clears throat> um, who, uh, she was one of the people that I learned a, a heck of a lot from, mm -hmm. um, not just vocally, just kind of mm -hmm. lots of good stuff. Um, and uh, I, I miss her, and um, over the past month I've been listening to a lot of stuff, and uh, there was um There was a, a sing in France, and the whole alto section just... I could see her. <laughs> I could see Charlie. <sighs> they, I don't think they know her. You know, I don't, I don't know, but they must have heard... I'm, I'm pretty sure I know which recording they were listening to. And she was just there. Oh, and I could just hear her. Right. They just brought her to... So it's like Charlene, uh, I don't think she ever made it to France. It was just there, and she was just there. And, um... It wasn't even a day that I'd been listening to her all day or anything. You know, it wasn't like I had had her in the forefront of my mind or whatever. I sent them a message because the people connections are important. You are down below. You are all alone. No light for my. Only ice and snow 
wander in a dream Lost without a trace Just the solo in the Wandering a dream Lost without a trace Just the soul So, Kath Tyler, thank you so much you for coming no, out. Wait, mm -hmm. before we finish this up, you know what? Right. You, I've been going blah, 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 blah. You've got to answer a question. Right, right, right. Yeah. right yeah. I've been hearing rumors right. about you. Right. And you need to answer whether or not they're true. Oh. I've been hearing a rumor about you right. and this Nigella. Uh, have you been Tell talking me. to Nev Clay? Doesn't know matter who two. I've been talking to. Well, there's absolutely no. Uh, I'm, I'm, now, uh, answer. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, listen, there is absolutely no truth in the rumor. That's dogging me. It's all in my uh, all, the third volume of my memoirs, which is coming out for Christmas. Oh, I haven't uh, read the first two yet. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I don't mention her in that. But uh, volume three, the Cromlington years, oh, uh, crap. <laughs> it's all in there. But otherwise, uh, uh, that's enough for now. We probably uh, we're just out of time. <sighs> so thank you, you Kath that. Tyler, and uh, I'll see you again soon. And uh, take care. Okay, bye bye. Safe at home, back in the womb-like confines of my... Oh, I've got a message. Oh, okay. Back in the womb-like confines of my imaginary Edwardian mansion. I want to say thank you so much to Kath Tyler. Uh, it was really interesting to have that chat. Uh, she sings in the first of the songs, which was in the podcast, which is Millbrook, by a composer called Neely Bruce. And uh, I absolutely love it. In the middle of the podcast was a really class track by Nick J called Little Banjo Song. Thank you, Nick. And at the end of the podcast was just some old no hope who will never live up to his crushing creative potential Next time, I'll be lost in space. <laughs> I'll be lost in space with Adam Denton. So at least I'm in good company. And we'll be talking about the old police house, amongst other things. The uh, renowned Gated music venue and art studio. But until then, fog out. Dum <laughs> dum